now, Florida Senator Marco Rubio. Uh, Senator, this was not your first State of the Union address. Uh, your general observations, uh, we saw, I felt the president that was screaming, yelling, kind of ranting, a speech that was completely partisan, maybe for reasons that Joe, uh, I guess maybe just known to himself, but I thought it was beyond bizarre at times and frankly a little frightening because it's so different than the everyday, everyday Joe that we see and hear from. What was your reaction to such a dramatic difference? Yeah, the whole thing was weird. I mean, I was actually <laughs> concerned. For, I mean, it really was. It really it was. Strange. was. And I think there's a couple things, okay? Here's the number one problem, right? Going into tonight, there were people in his own party that are, that are really worried about him. You know, does he have the energy? Is he too old? Does he have the mental and physical stamina? So I think they told him, you got to go in there and you got to show energy. And to him, that meant, let me scream, like the guy that screams at you to get off his lawn, you know? Scream for you know, an hour and a half about all kinds of things. And then there were parts of it that, frankly, were bizarre and insulting. So, for example, he's out there, you know, lecturing Americans about, basically, here's the message. The economy is doing much better than you think it's doing. I don't care how much things cost you. I don't care how much you're suffering or how much you're worried about the future. We have the best economy in the world. So he's describing a country that is not the experience people are having today. And then he went on to do things that were really bizarre. This whole thing about building a port in Gaza is just flat out strange. I mean, the idea that you're going to somehow build a port and not have American servicemen in the line in the line of fire with the Houthis firing rockets over your head, with Hamas just off the coast, with all this going on is absurd. You're putting people in danger's way and all of it. Then he talks about a two state solution. Let me tell you what he means by two state solution. It's not Israel and Palestine. His state two state solution that I think he's trying to arrive at with all these crazy ideas are Michigan and Minnesota. Those are the two states that he's most worried about because he's afraid he's going to lose them. Tonight, he almost didn't make it. I'm sure one of the reasons why he was late is he had these radical Hamas supporters, many of them key voters in the base of his party, that were blocking them from leaving the White House. They had to deal with those crazies. So that's one of the reasons why he was late, I imagine, and the images uh, have been on television all afternoon. So just wait till the convention when those crazies get there. So the whole thing was just bizarre. You say hyper-partisan, no doubt about it. I've never seen a State of the Union ever. I don't recall any, maybe there's been one in the past, where a sitting president mentions his predecessor or, or opponent and future opponent so many different times and misleads people with it. So I think the only thing he achieved tonight, there's a bunch of Democrats saying, breathing a sigh of relief that he's not weakened at Bernie's, that he's not, that, you know, he's alive and, and that he was able to get through a speech and that apparently he's still able to scream. But beyond that, I mean, I'm sure they're very happy about it. They're relieved, I would say. But the rest of the country saw kind of a grumpy guy uh, saying things that are nonsensical. Then he, some, look, he mumbled a lot. I couldn't, I don't know if it came across on TV. You couldn't hear it well on the floor. Some of it was mumbling something about Snickers bars and bags of chips. I imagine he's talking about like he claims the Snickers bars are smart, smart, uh, smaller than they used to be, which I know is a big priority for many Americans, not things like our border. But um, anyway, the whole thing was just weird. Well, let me ask you this. It w will this angry, jacked up Joe Biden, hyped up Joe Biden, hyper partisan Joe Biden, will it have the effect if the if the goal was to perhaps shore up his base? Will will this speech do that? Well, it's a proof of life speech, right? That's what it was. Is that I'm, I'm alive and I'm able to give a speech that I can read off a teleprompter and I'm able to do the whisper, but mostly the screaming. And I'm able to say things that are really mean about the Republican Party and the, the Supreme Court. And I can make claims that they're going to get rid of Social Security, things that don't exist. And it makes a lot of the people in that room who are some of them are pretty radical, very happy. So I imagine if you're watching some of these other networks, some of these commentators, which are a bunch of buffoons, are out there saying, well, this is really, you know, they're just reading the talking points that are being sent to them. So I think it achieved the proof of life that maybe some of them, they just wanted to get through tonight. I don't think it makes any difference in terms of the campaign. And if this is what he's going to campaign on, I mean, this guy's going to lose by eight or nine points. I mean, it's just literally yeah. nonsensical, bizarre, uh, uh, you know, hallucinations. Um, it's completely out of touch with reality, but, you know, I, I imagine partisans are very happy because he looked like he could scream tough things, you know, and, and, and maybe that's was enough for them for tonight. Anyway, Senator, by the way, it's great to have a senator that uh, actually will talk to me from my own state. Now I'm in the free state of Florida, your state, so uh, that we appreciate you being with us. Senator Marco Rubio, thank you.